Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. And welcome to this week's edition of The Porter Report with investigative journalist Gareth Porter. Thanks very much for joining us again, Gareth. Hello, Paul. Glad to be back. Thank you. So uh, in terms of Iran, the last couple of weeks during the, during the, the debates, uh, President Obama said in uh, response to a question, which was, is there really going to be direct U.S.-Iran negotiations, which somebody seems to have leaked to the press because it made it into most of the major newspapers, I think. He said, well, there's no such thing going on. So what did you make of all that? Well, first of all, uh, you know, this is one of those stories where there are nuances that are very easily missed as the story gets uh, to retold from the original story. In this case, it was the New York Times that had the report uh, that there, uh, there had been agreement which uh, the original story did not qualify further uh, between Iran and the United States to hold face-to-face uh, -face talks, one-on-one -on -one talks for the first time. There had been, of course, talks between the United States and Iran in the context of the P5 plus one, the permanent five members of the uh, UN Security Council plus Germany on one side and Iran on the other side, but there had not been really substantive uh, meeting between the United States and Iran, just, uh, just the two of them previously. So this would be a pretty s significant breakthrough in terms of its implications. But what, um, what happened then was that the United States uh, government issued a denial that was not really a denial. In other words, what they said was that the United States and Iran have not agreed uh, to talks before or after the, uh, the elections. Uh, and so that was a denial that there had been a, an agreement, or, or certainly could be construed as a denial that there had been agreement on a specific uh, meeting on a specific date, or even an approximate date. Uh, whereas it left open the uh, possibility, of course, that they had agreed in principle that they would talk, but they would, you know, get back together uh, to to reach agreement. So, on so the but timing. what do you make of it? And the, the New York Times is usually the White House's, uh, what is it, uh, le le leaker of record. Uh, well, it's 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 the leaker of preference, I think, uh, over and over again, and and certainly in this case, uh, someone. Uh, in the White House or uh, the State Department was willing uh, to talk off the record and say, yeah, we, we've got something going here. We think we can, uh, we can in fact, have face-to-face -face talks because of our contacts with the Iranians. Now, it's been speculated that this was being done by somebody who was hostile uh, to the idea of talks with the hope that it could be sabotaged, that it could be discouraged uh, by leaking it just before an election. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical about that, frankly, be, for the primary reason being that uh, I'm not sure that this was something that the White House would have been, uh, you know, afraid of on the grounds that the electorate would, would be uh, averse uh, to the news that the United States and Iran were talking. I mean, after all, it's understood by uh, most people in this country that there have to be negotiations to end the the standoff on Iran's nuclear program. And I, I think the uh, polling data shows that most people support that and uh, that this, this was not uh, regarded as particularly a negative story. Now, what, what, think, mo what most people don't know is that there's been various opportunities to have these kind of negotiations in the past, and the United States has not been so interested. Well, that's right. I mean, the, the United States has not been interested, I think, in two things. One. Um, in, in talking one-on-one -on -one with the Iranians, which you know, could be construed as uh, a, a move by the United States to uh, move the talks to a more serious level. And more, uh, more to the point, the United States government, the Obama administration, has not been interested in negotiations in the sense that the United States is ready to make serious concessions on the one issue that, of course, is of primary concern uh, to Iran, which is sanctions relief. And we've talked about this before, that that's the big hang-up, that's been the hang-up throughout 2012, that the United States is asking Iran to make very far-reaching concessions, um, specifically on 20% enrichment, but 
not offering really any substantive concession in return, uh, specifically on sanctions relief. So, you know, if, if in fact uh, they are talking about uh, uh, direct one-on-one -on -one conversations between the United States and Iran, does that mean that the United States is now softening on, in its position on sanctions relief? That remains to be seen. I'm not convinced that they, the United States is there yet at all. Uh, but let's face it, I mean, once those talks start, if in fact uh, uh, Obama is reelected, once they start in 2013, it's still going to be a long road. There are going to be several phases through which the talks will go, and uh, the United States is undoubtedly not going to start out with uh, that kind of concession. So uh, that, that's where I think we are. We are not on the brink of a breakthrough, uh, but there, there is certainly the possibility that there could be some progress um, compared with 2012. And, uh, and there's also the develop, development that the Iranians now, uh, the, I guess the IAEA is, is, uh, came to this conclusion, but actually had uh, transitioned a lot of their 20 percent enriched uranium into medical use. And even the Israeli authorities now, uh, Defense Minister Barak said, this is clearly there's not, not as short a window before there's a nuclear uh, c weapons capacity, assuming there even is a desire for them to have one, because we keep saying in these interviews over and over again, there's still no evidence that they have any plans to build a bomb. But the, 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 that shift also seems to have happened. Right. I mean, and that shift is significant because it telegraphs, as I've said before, uh, the Iranian desire to negotiate on precisely on this issue of the 20 percent enrichment. It means that they're not rushing to try to get uh, as much 20% enriched uranium as they can, as fast as they can, contrary to the hard right-wing position on this, but rather that the Iranians uh, really simply want to make a deal and they see the 20% enriched uranium as their primary negotiating uh, cards, their, their negotiating chips, if you will. And without that 20% enrichment, should they give that up without Getting, getting anything in return for the United States of substance, then of course they're really out of luck because uh, the United States will not feel uh, the necessity to really uh, negotiate hard with, with the Iranians. And, 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 and uh, just, just quickly, give us a recap. There's, there's been several opportunities to have these kind of direct negotiations that haven't gone anywhere. Just uh, three important ones we know of. Just give us a quick recap of those. Well, of course, uh, you know, you go back to the uh, period before the Obama administration, during the uh, Bush administration, you had a situation uh, in which the, uh, the uh, European three, the UK, the Germans, and the French, were negotiating with Iran on the nuclear program. And it was at that point that the Iranians really offered uh, a deal that was uh, quite favorable from the present perspective of anybody um, on, uh, on the Western side which was to limit uh, their, the number of centrifuges to 3,000, uh, which would have been well short of what uh, would have been uh, really necessary for weapons-grade uh, uranium enrichment, ultimately. Uh, you know, it certainly telegraphed uh, their desire to, to have a program that was well short of, of the... Um, uh, what, what is needed for a weapons programs. So uh, that was turned down by the Europeans flat because they said uh, the United States does not want a single centrifuge to be spinning. And that, of course, was the position of the Bush administration. So that, that was the, the biggest opportunity that we passed up. Before that, of course, there was the 2003 uh, offer by the uh, Khatami government which was uh, to, to negotiate not only on the nuclear program, but on the full range of issues separating the United States and Iran. Uh, and, and there were a number of things in that, including the willingness to uh, reach, uh, to make an accommodation on the issue of Israel that uh, was, were quite surprising. Um, and again, the Bush administration refused to even respond to that, so that went nowhere. Yeah, we know and, from interviews we've done with Larry Wilkerson, who was in the State Department, and at that time and saw all this, uh, and this essentially was closed down by Cheney, who didn't want these kinds of negotiations. Right, and then I would point to uh, previous uh, experiences, one of which I just actually wrote about this week, where the Khatami government um, and the Rafsanjani government before it 
made efforts to try to, um, to soften the hostility on the part of the United States. Uh, I mean, actually, there were more than two efforts, uh, but, but I would just mention a couple of them. The one that I wrote about that the Khatami government made in 1998 was an invitation to U.S. nuclear scientists to form a delegation to go to Iran to examine the nuclear program there, uh, to talk to whomever they wanted, to go wherever they wanted to go, uh, and ask whatever question they wanted to ask. Um, and this was uh, a, a request that was then, um, it, there was an organized effort by uh, Dr. Berad Nakai, a, a nuclear scientist at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, an Iranian, um, who had contacts with a number of prominent nuclear scientists. He got them interested. They, they were working on forming a delegation. He was offering uh, to, to include a nuclear weapons specialist or more than one nuclear weapons specialist. He was offering to let the Pentagon actually name someone that they wanted on the delegation. Uh, but the Pentagon vetoed it. They said, no, we're not interested. We think you'd be deceived, and therefore we won't let this go forward. And of course, the uh, nuclear scientists needed uh, clearances, which only the U.S. government could give them, and that was the death knell for this uh, initiative. Right. But, but the importance of it is that it could have, in fact, led to uh, you know, much more willingness um, on the part of, or, or, or much more a politically uh, more favorable context in which to hold uh, talks eventually, and, and that, that uh, was passed up, obviously, particularly by the Pentagon at that point. Right. Before that, there was another effort by Rafsanjani uh, to, uh, uh, to open up with the United States by releasing U.S. hostages, and I've written about that as well. Robert M. Gates uh, sabotaged it in 1991-92. Okay, just quickly before we go, you, you're about to start a new book, and just quickly tell us, the, the, I believe you're raising funds for the book on Kickstarter. People can go to kickstarter.com, search for Gareth Porter, and you'll find just really fast. The, the book is about this, isn't it? More it exactly. I'm, I'm working on a book, uh, plan to work on a book, haven't started yet, called uh, 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 Manufactured Crisis, The Secret History of the, the Iran Nuclear Scare. And uh, the, the book uh, will have a number of important revelations, uh, some of which uh, I've talked about on, uh, on this show, but uh, most of which will be new to people. And indeed, we are uh, trying to raise the money for, to cover my work on it through Kickstarter, and, and people can find, uh, f find the proposal uh, by, by searching under my name there. All right, that's great. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. Thank you, Paul. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.